I'm going to talk about a proposed model for tracking university interdisciplinary projects. I'm going to give you just an um, abstract of the main concepts that my fellow is going to get more in depth. Well, until now, Latin American university model is not the most ideal um, environment for scientific innovation. Why we said that? Because in most of our universities, all the research projects are not viewed from a multi from an interdisciplinary perspective, but just from a disciplinary perspective. At most, by multidisciplinary perspective, with contributions from many disciplines. But uh, as we have seen in many universities in Latin America and also in Ecuador in my country, we have found no evidence that there are actually interdisciplinary projects. So then arises a question. Could university research contribute to the development of the country? Maybe you could say, yes, of course, that's obvious. That's not so obvious in our country. And why not? Because projects, as I have said before, are not conducted in such a way that we could generate something actually new, innovation. Innovation is not actually done in our countries. We have made a survey in some um, universities that belong to the Aushal Network. The Aushal Network is a network composed of universities that belong to the Catholic Church and that are managed by the Jesus community. And also we have made uh, a survey in Ecuadorian universities that belong to a Redo community. Redo community is a um, community for research that is composed of um, many universities of high standards in Ecuador. And we have found no evidence until now. Then um, we thought also that um, we need a way to measure if actually an in interdisciplinary project is successful. Although or even though the project have reached the outcomes that it was supposed to be at the beginning. But is it actually successful from an interdisciplinary point of view or not? We think that it could be successful only if it could be demonstrated that the key concepts, the basic concepts, have been transformed throughout the process. So our model proposes to establish an initial conceptual basis for each discipline and also a crossing matrix by which the same or similar concepts are used in a research project. Finally, the project ends by rethinking and also reformulating the initial concepts and then verifying them into a matrix. So my fellow is going to continue with a theme. So first we try to just understand why Latin American universities uh, haven't achieved uh, high innovation levels. So let me show uh, a brief uh, historical and a general explanation of the origins of our universities. So in um, universitology, uh, uh, it's marked three main university currents. The first one is the Humboldtian University model. It comes from Germany. The origins, well, uh, it's just many, the Greeks, the uh, uh, Alexandria Library, and of course, uh, comes Manuel Kahn. There are two main guys, right? Friedrich Slayer Macher and Johann Fichte, and then with their colleague, uh, Wilhelm von Humboldt. 
and they designed a, a university model uh, for research. The other one is um, came from France is just to teach uh, and to have uh, servants, uh, functionaries, and people with uh, technical skills in order to to do a better a service uh, for the government. This is called the Napoleonic University. And the last one, this uh, Cardinal John Henry Newman, a uh, British guy, he tried to uh, join the two main points of the other two. But with his uh, Catholic directions, and this is in, took place in England. And I think this is one of the three of our origins. So Latin American universities took ideas from Napoleon, other Napoleonic universities, the Catholic Church, something about Newman's proposal, and of course our uh, 500 condition, 500 years condition. Um, We did a little survive about interdisciplinary projects in our universities. Uh, the results were very poor. Uh, next, what is multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, and transdisciplinarity? I hear in this conference a lot of concepts of this tree, and it's just to uh, summarize. Summarizing this multidisciplinarity is just the conjunction of many disciplines in order to uh, do something that requires many disciplines. Interdisciplinary is a little more. And these three concepts came from um, uh, Jean-Francois Revel and other French guy. And with a little uh, work, uh, Edgar Moran, Emmanuel uh, Thomas Kahn, and Isaac Asimov. Because in interdisciplinary, the disciplines are going to transform. But what? So, the key of the proposal is to make a comparison between the conceptual basis set at the start point of the project we didn't want set at the end. And that's it. That's the only thing that we have to do in order to say, ah, that is a successful interdisciplinary project. Because the project results in the transformations of the key concepts of the disciplines involved. If we don't get we cannot obtain the transformation of the concepts. It's just a multidisciplinary project. Mm. 
Every discipline is based on a specific body of concepts. An expert can say at the start of the project, these are our concepts. And at the end, just compare if these concepts are transformed or which concept is transformed. But uh, how if we, can, if we need to track the interdisciplinary project? What can we do? So this is the model, just a little steps, a little number of steps. Uh, first, as I said, we establish a conceptual basis of the ideas related to research of every discipline involved. These are called key concepts. Each concept, we must do a limitation, a border of the concept, the scope of the concept. This is a mente facto. Then, with all the concepts, we make a list, and this is our conceptual basis. During the process, for, we have to cross the concepts of all the disciplines because one concept can be conceived in one form in one discipline and in other form in other discipline. And this is a crossing matrix. We have a science field. Uh, we have the Uh, disciplines, and in each disciplines we have research lines, and in each research line we put here the concepts, or the mente facto, mente of each concepts. If the concept of one research line is not the same of the other, so we have to put here both concepts. How many matrix? How many crossing matrix? Well, just uh, an, uh, it's a combination of disciplines with a two by two scheme, regardless of the order. The formula to calculate is this. So we have uh, you have uh, two science fields, one matrix, three matrix, uh, uh, for and three matrix for three sciences, six matrix is for. Uh, four sciences and so on. So during the project, in each milestone, we have to review how the concepts uh, evolved. Evolved. Interdisciplinary is achieved if one or more concepts are transformed because they were conceived differently in each discipline at the beginning of the process. Or maybe a new concept emerges. And that's it. Uh, we can uh, say that an interdisciplinary project is successful uh, and in the university, uh, I think, uh, in Latin American universities, the interdisciplinary work may help to reduce the scientific gap between uh, developed countries. Yes. 
Yes. It's just refining, redefining. So, so one, one, one result is that you refined a discipline or, or both. Yeah. Uh, both. One is that you may have created a new discipline. Can you right? get to all this yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the model matrix, right? And the matrix allows me to visualize um, the degree to which there has been a change in that discipline. If you've adopted or you've created a hybrid or in the conceptual place, basis right? of the discipline. And you can, and you can gauge the, the amount of change that's being adopted or uh, where I'm going is, is the result that you, the, I can see two different results. At least, you know, mentally, I can see a result that says you, you may result in refining both the disciplines that have this relationship. You might also at one point actually discover that you've innovated and created another discipline. A new discipline, I'm yes. Perhaps just talk about yeah, what point you cross, right? Yeah, non-science areas that will interact with some of the science areas. Yes. Because as I said, uh, certainly mathematics and computer science and so on tests are not usually, you know, aren't usually in your grid, but they have to be in one of the two dimensions. And the other challenge as a experiment modeling is that you're probably creating some taxonomies of lexicons for each discipline, which you need to agree upon up front that you have to ready it's some sort of an ontology professors, so each full professor corresponds to one or two research lines. And Maybe. that may not be the best division, but it may be the most practical 